Hi there. This is part of a series of videos I've been making reacting to the news that HBO has officially hired prominent screenwriter Matson Tomlin to write the third Game of Thrones prequel series about Aegon's conquest, the Targaryen War of Conquest. And I've been trying to focus on pragmatic production issues that we can actually measure, like they might want to do the first season as a movie, they've discussed doing this, things we can measure, that I'm not really into fan casting, because there's no point to it. I mean, most of the people they cast in House of the Dragon were complete unknowns. And most of the people that get suggested in fan casting are popular actors, not people who would actually fit the role. So I'm just annoyed that all the other discussion I've been seeing about this is fan casting. It's not even like discussing how would you adapt it book to screen is another thing. I have a separate video I already made, I'm going to link uh, in the playlist about like, well, how do we fit Starks and Lannisters in because they're not really that much of a part of the story overall. Other things like that, like House of the Dragon, I wasn't, when that was in development, I wasn't just fan casting. I was making videos about like, how would we address the, that there's this big unreliable narrator element to it. Or how do we address the time skips? Not just, I know it's because people who aren't really analyzing it seriously just go, it's easy to make fan castings. <laughs> so I'm keeping this short. I just want to address that, that it, it's diminishing returns. There's no point to it. But the one thing I do want to emphasize, in case you've forgotten, is this show would span 50 years. So much like House of the Dragon, when you're discussing fan castings, they're going to recast the leads, much as they recast young Rhaenyra to adult Rhaenyra, that what we think they're doing is a five-act structure where season one, which they're doing as a movie instead of a TV season, would be the actual War of Conquest. Then season two would be the later reign of Aegon, the main action element would be the first Dornish War, which is this protracted insurgency. Then season three would be the reign of his weak son, Aenys. Then, Season 4 would be the rise of his second son, King Magor, who becomes this cruel tyrant, culminating in Season 5, the fall of Magor. Well, if you look at that, Seasons 3 to 5 wouldn't have time skips, from when Aegon himself dies of old age to when Magor dies is about 12 years, so there aren't prominent child characters like Arya or Daenerys, not prominent teenagers. Now, well, you might have to recast one or two of them, but like Reyna or something, but like Magor, Aenys, the adult characters he wouldn't really need to recast from the start of Season 3 to the end of Season 5. If Season 2 covers the later reign of Aegon, that's almost 40 years. He ruled 37 years. I mean, it's just a major time period. And maybe you could end with when the First Dornish War ends. And I think 13 after Conquest because not that much happened for the next 25-odd years, from 13 to 37 after Conquest. So maybe maybe you could get away with just having a recast elderly Aegon on his deathbed in the Season 3 premiere. You, you can, might be able to do that. I think the same actor could probably play Aegon first and set most of the second season. Biggest issue of all is Visenya, who outlives them all. Visenya lives to be 80. She is 80 years old, flying a dragon, in, in burning rebels' castles in the Faith Militant Uprising. She would be the through line. Visenya, Magor's mother, lives through Season 5 in this scenario we have here. You would have to recast her. I mean, I remember it was pretty interesting to us when um, there isn't a lot of fan art of older Visenya, to the point that people forget how old she lived that in that art book version of uh, the, the Blood of the Dragon Part 1 that Westeros.org put out, and they said it's basically just a coffee table book with new official artwork and an abridged version of Fire and Blood. They said it was really weird. This is the first time we have commissioned artwork for elderly Visenya. That people forget that. So whereas Aegon, you might have an older actor playing him in a scene or two, Visenya would have to be recast between seasons 2 and 3. So you're talking about older Visenya, younger Visenya, when you're talking about who you're casting, some people keep going, let, well, let me not avoid the elephant in the room. A lot of people say that another medieval star from medieval show Vikings, Catherine Winnick, would make an amazing Visenya. I agree, 
if this was 10 years ago when season one of that show came out. That I don't think, I think she's too old to play Visenya at this point. Season one Visenya. Maybe they could recast in the middle of this to have, when people are, oh, I want to fan cast that actor, you're thinking of, not just her, but many actors, you're thinking of them when they were in a movie 10 years ago. They've aged since then and will age more by the time this films. So you have to think that out. But in this case, we have a show that will have time skips in it. I can't rule out that she might play the older version for a period of time. Or with, Obviously, I don't think she can play an 80-year-old woman, but uh, if they shift actors every season or something or use age makeup, I don't know. The other thing is people keep suggesting Henry Cavill because he was Superman and then he was really good in The Witcher. He's a great actor, and I really like him. He's going to be busy doing Warhammer, finally bringing us the Emperor. Praise the Emperor. But the point is, you just want Henry Cavill in this, regardless of whether he's good for the role. But, oh, make him Aegon the Conqueror. He doesn't fit Aegon the Conqueror. I mean, physically, he doesn't look Valyrian. He has very square-jawed features. Valyrians have very sharp features, narrow features, kind of like Matt Smith. And... He might be able to play, like, an older Oris Baratheon, not young Oris, so I think they'd go with a teenager 20-something. But by the time they film, I think Henry Cavill could play, like, an older Oris Baratheon. One other note to close on is a lot of people, it's amazing how much people have hyped up their mental image of Aegon the Conqueror, because a lot of people didn't have a mental image of Rhaenyra and Alicent, because they, they weren't really mentioned that much in the main TV series. But Aegon the Conqueror, at least, was mentioned enough in the main Game of Thrones series that casual fans got bad interpretations of him, where they build him up as this classic dude-bro alpha male conqueror guy. And what the books actually say about Aegon the Conqueror is that he was this distant, brooding figure, and they say even his contemporaries said he was an enigma. He didn't have close personal friends. Oris Baratheon was probably his only real friend, People could never get a read on him. And as we now know, Martin himself has confirmed, it's because Aegon the Conqueror was haunted by prophecy and destiny, that he had this prophetic dream about the apocalypse coming from the north and the White Walkers killing everyone. So he was haunted by destiny and prophecy. That's why he was brooding, aloof, and distant. And I think in many ways, the, the coding for Aegon the Conqueror is that he was a lot like his descendant, Jon Snow's father and Daenerys' older brother, Rhaegar Targaryen, who, as we later found out, no, he wasn't this crazy raper guy, nor was he a salesman. He was this uh, consumed by his feelings and brooding and, and playing sad songs on a harp, and turns out he must have found out some, they said, well, he found out some scroll about a prophecy, then he started training to be a warrior, that, look, you've either got the brooding soft boy consumed by his emotions like Paul Atreides, Rhaegar, Aegon the Conqueror, or you've got the brooding bad boy wild card like Daemon. The, the women really love that brooding, you know. But the point is, I think Aegon the Conqueror was a lot like Rhaegar, where he was haunted by prophecy and kind of distant in that way. And the irony is, I think Henry Cavill can actually play that pretty well, because that's kind of what his Superman was that the way he played Superman wasn't as this I'm awesome guy. But, and some people complained about that. They said Superman would be haunted by his own abilities and, and not know what to do, that I have the power of a god, but he knows I, my comprehension, my mind and morality is no better than another person's and, and overburdened with the morality of how do I use my power and, and I don't want to abuse it and... and the power of life and death over so many would really his conscience you know that that scene where he's in the church and the stained glass is obviously an imagery from when christ was in gethsemane the, the garden and, and he's plagued by doubt that's what superman would be like i think that's a bet a better take on the character and that he played him with pathos like that so ironically i think um, Aegon the conqueror would be a lot like um Man of Steel era Henry Cavill, and we can kind of gloss over, well, we'll slap a, a white wig on him. Maybe he'll look like a Valyrian. I've never seen him in a white wig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so just, point is, if this was 10 years ago, yeah, but I think he's too old to play young Aegon. Or Winnick is too old to play young Visenya. I can't rule out, you know, there's time skips. They're going to recast them once, possibly twice, because there's going to be an 80-year-old Visenya at one point. 
What about mid-run Visenya? Maybe it'll be like The Crown, where they recast them every season, or at least... I, I see at least three recasts. There's going to be season one, season two, where there's like 40 years worth of time skips, then three through five, where it's Aenys through Magor. But when people are discussing fan casting, guys, take into account that one, actors age, and number two, the characters will age. There will be time skips, and they will have to recast them at various points. Though that's not so much a limit as an opportunity. That there's more than one fan cast you can make for the same character, I don't know. But I will be reporting on casting rumors if we hear this person started following Tomlin on Instagram. I'm not just going to be making wish lists about who I think will be playing. Because House of the Dragon, they mostly cast unknowns or people who didn't immediately spring to mind. Well, not unknowns. I mean, they've been in movies like... Um, but, well, for the younger actors, they were unknowns, but for, like, adult Allison, Matt Smith, these are people who had been in movies and were established actors, but they weren't just casting celebrity actors. You know, I don't want Brad Pitt. Even 20 years ago, Brad Pitt isn't a good fit for Damon Blackfire if they were making a Blackfire Rebellion show. I want them to cast someone based on the role, not just to show off a celebrity.